We have come to the semi-finals here at the Lower Eastern Region, and uh, with us here we have the motion to dissect, which reads, Africa's over-dependence on non-genetically modified food crops is the main hindrance to achieving food security. I read the motion again, Africa's over-dependence on non-genetically modified food crops is the main hindrance to achieving food security. Proposing and opposing this motion today is Center Zamboni Girls versus Kathiani Girls High School, and all the best to both teams. I have been your host, Jenna Ching. Team proposition, first speaker, you have three minutes. Nikonja nasiwezi karanga, hohe hae shagala bagala. Can you hear the rumbling of my stomach? Look at my face. This is the face of a hungry child. My name, Oprah Winfrey, obviously hungry, from Kathiani Girls High School, the mighty Kathiani Girls High School, proposing the motion, Africa's over-dependence on non-genetically modified food crops is the main hindrance to achieving food security. July is the harvest season for Lower Eastern. On our journey here, we must have seen farms. The farms have dried crops. This means that families in Lower Eastern, Machakos, Makuweni, and Kitui are going to go without food. This is because non-GMOs cannot withstand the changing weather. What are non-GMOs? These are foods that haven't gone through genetic modification. In other terms, we can refer to them as kienyeji. Over dependence, according to the Oxford Online Dictionary, is relying so much onto something. Hindering is to make it difficult, while food security is the state of having reliable access to sufficient quantity and affordable food. Uh, as I have said, as I have said, non-genetic organisms cannot withstand droughts. The solution to my hunger, the solution to your hunger, the solution to Africa's family's hunger is to embrace new technologies such as the genetically modified organisms which will mitigate our solution of hunger and starvation as a continent. With that, my face will change from this to this. According to Oxford Academic, genetic engineering improves the plant performance under drought by 85.67. That means that I will have food on my table by 85.67%. Another thing, non-genetic modified organisms, the key in Yeji, are not fast growing. Have you ever tried to tell a hungry person to wait? Hungry and waiting are not in the same WhatsApp group. SC Duma 441, a genetically modified food group, takes 85 days to grow, while the indigenous one takes 120 days to grow. Can you see the difference? Thank you. Thank you very much. First speaker, team opposition, you have three minutes. So many benefits of the genetically modified foods have you given me. But for how long are we going to allow the so-called superpower countries trash the untrashable into our continent? I mean, for how long are we going to continue posting our emaciated children on the social media? For how long? Well, it is about time we put an end to all this. My name is Mudo Kiana from Centres Boni Girls, and I'm here to strongly oppose the motion that says that Africa's over-dependence on non-genetically modified food is the main hindrance to food security. Well, what are genetically modified foods? These are foods which have their genes changed artificially in order to suit certain things, such as the ability of not being able to be attacked by diseases and to yield more. And what is food security? 
food security is the ability of a country to be able to sustain its people. Well, um, you talked about the GMOs being able to provide you with the hiles that you need, but doesn't this katumani seed you so, you, to, you so negatively talk about, do you know where most of these go to? Well, let me educate you. This because 14% gets lost while you're harvesting. 17% is lost during production, 11% lost during households, and 2% is lost in retails. Well, if you are able to work on all these percentages that is getting lost, you would not embrace GMOs. Um, we say that instead of giving up one man fish, why don't you just take him to the river and show him how to fish? Why? Why won't you do that? Well, over dependence on relief food. According to a research carried out in the year 2017, March 13th, by Yale University, they were able to prove that over dependence on relief food is what Africa's continent is suffering from. I mean, look at a country like Sudan. Don't they have fertile soils enough to produce very good wheat? Don't they? Of course they have. Isn't their soil so good that it can provide them with the best sugar cane? Isn't it? But no. Look. Since they are so used to be provided by these genetically modified foods you so call, since they are so much used to be given foods from the so-called superpower nations, they cannot grow their own foods. I'm trying to tell you that, yes, you can take GMOs, but no, they are not the main hindrance to food security in Africa. They are not. Um, we talk about poor government policies. For example, let's talk about Kenya. The government actually put high taxation on our food. Let me, let me remind you that if, they were, if these taxes were not so high, then that means that food security could be there because as a hustler, earning 200 shillings per day and you being able to sell that GMO so-called unga packet at 230, how am I going to buy that? It is about time that if we do not die of what you already know, then we are going to die of what you know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Second speaker, team proposition, you have three minutes. A hungry man is an angry man. Nothing hurts more than the bitter pangs of hunger. Uh, allow me to correct you, my sister. The motion is stating Africa over de of Africa's over-dependence on non-genetically modified food crops is the main hindrance to food security. So we are not saying that genetically modified food crops, GMOs, is the hindrance. We are saying that the Kienyeji, the relief food that you're actually talking about, that's what we're saying is the main hindrance to, GM to, to, to food security. Now, non-genetically modified food crops uh, uh, yield little or nothing. What exactly can we do with nothing? Will we eat nothing? According to, uh, according to an article by Frontiers, in uh, April 2020, 2022, there are, there are warning signs that food security, that food security goals formulated in 2015 will not be achieved. This is happening while so 150 million children below five years of age are suffering from starvation. With these figures, we cannot afford to plant crops that will not yield or yield little. Otherwise, we are going to starve ourselves to death. We are going to starve ourselves to extinction. Another fact is that non-genetically modified plants have no tolerance to atmospheric tr stress, be it drought, be it uh, floods, and all this other atmospheric stress. Non-genetically modified, uh, non-genetically modified food crops cannot handle atmospheric stress, meaning that they, that meaning that if we face something like drought, if we face something like uh, a certain climatic change that we will starve to hunger? Is that what it means? Yes, 
it is what it means so meaning that embracing non genetically food non genetically modified food is actually a risky thing especially with the tropical climate that we have in our country in our continent sorry in the sub saharan uh, take a case in ovithopia the region is currently exp uh, experiencing the most the most severe and protracted drought in decades as a result of unpre unprecedented levels of accurate of acute food insecurity this is as per the daily nation of 24th march 2023 uh, non genetically modified non genetically modified food crops also a non resistance a non resistance to viruses and diseases viruses and diseases are the most are the, are the one of the major things that are affecting the the organic food crops this and they are also and they are also non resistant to pesticides which means we cannot even fight this virus and diseases which means it is a huge huge risk thank you thank you very much second speaker team opposition you have 3 minutes wow you guys look so nice today. And I tend to think this is because our schools are providing us with naturally grown uh, foods. That's why we look so great. But worry comes into my mind. Worry comes into my conscience whenever I think about Africa adopting GMOs. This is because this is where we introduce the issue of obesity. This is where, do you want your men to develop breasts? Do you want your women to develop biceps? Well, I wouldn't want that myself. So, as St. Therese Mboni Girls, from St. Therese Mboni Girls, my name is Vanessa Ndungu. Um, a point has been given that they are made, uh, the genetically modified foods grow fast and are tolerant to climate changes. Well, let me tell you this. Do you know the reason why they are tolerant, uh, they are tolerant to climate changes? Do you know the reason why they are made to grow fast. This is because they are made from a mixture of allergens and genes which can actually cause changes in human DNA, which can actually cause genetic mutations. Do you, do, do you want our future children to be genetically mutated? Well, as myself, I wouldn't want that. Uh, natural calamities are also causes of food insecurity. Uh, this is in cases uh, in cities like Orlando, New Orleans in America, which have rec which recently uh, experienced hurricanes and tsunamis. These hurricanes and tsunamis swept away poultry farms, which are actually the uh, they are, uh, what the, the agricultural uh, the agriculture that they take uh, that they. Uh, carry out in that place and they carried uh, the hurricanes carried away 3000 poultry that is uh, comprising of the chickens and the other birds okay in DRC Congo that is in 2022 uh, in April, we heard about the volcanic eruptions of a mountain there. And these volcanic erup eruptions, the magma came into the people's lands, uh, carrying, uh, destroying all their crops. Isn't this another, another, um, another cause to food insecurity? Pests and diseases are also a crucial problem cause, uh, causing food insecurity in Africa. In 2021, in Kenya, that is from the Daily Nation, July 21, locusts, didn't we all hear about locusts? These locusts destroyed our maize plantations, the plantations that the farmers had worked for for so long, yet you tell me that not adapting GMOs is the main hindrance that is making Africa uh, not achieve food security. Aphids and armyworms, haven't we heard about a fortnight ago, haven't we heard about the aphids in Meru County destroying their crops, leaving them with nothing? So isn't this another uh, cause to food insecurity? So as St. Therese Girls, we say that G not, um, uh, not uh, adopting GMOs is not the main hindrance to achieving food insecurity in Africa. Thank you. <laughs> Third speaker team, proposition, you have three minutes. I'm hungry. You are hungry. We are all hungry. Yes, we are hungry. 
join a Josephine Sitati from Kardiani Girls High School proposing the motion Africa's over independence on non genetically modified food crops is the main hindrance to achieving food security. Second speaker, you say you talked of genetically modified, you talked of genetically modified food crops increasing the nutritional value. But non-genetically, food crops do not have increased nutritional value, while GMOs have increased nutritional value, such as golden rice, which boost the health of people in, in places with limited access of food. For example, in Turkana, the government supplied them with golden rice due to their starvation. Now, my first point. Non-genetically modified food go bad quickly. What do we do to food when it rots? We throw it away. This leads to wastage. Don't you think African countries should be throwing away food, yet we are starving? With 21% of African population facing hunger and starvation, this translates to 282 million people who are undernourished in Africa. This is according to the World Vision 2022. Also, the current population of Nigeria in 2023 is at 223,804,632, while the population in 2022 was 218,541,212. This shows a whooping 2.41% increase from 2022, an ever-growing population according to Worldometer. An ever-growing population like Nigeria cannot be sustained with non-genetically modified food crops which have low levels of production due to lack of synthetic fertilizers to sustain them. A research of maize production in Akuru on April 2020 revealed that there were low levels of maize production due to our over-independence on them, on the non-genetically modified type. We are starving. Had we grown the top yielding genetically modified type of maize crop, we would have gotten 36, 90 more kilobugs from it, bearing in mind Nakuru farms are more fertile than other parts of Kenya. We are facing starvation as a country. We should look for better methods better technology like genetically modified food crops to sustain us to sustain the food security that we are facing thank you thank you very much third speaker team opposition you have three minutes mother nature a mother who cares so much for their children that she provides them with good climatic factors good fertile soils but their land the children still don't have food and she wonders why is it that they have not adopted the gmos well i disagree and think that there are other problems that bring about food insecurity in africa and first and foremost, we did not mention food, the food that we're talking about having non-nutrition. We never stated of food being non-nutritional. And for, for your information, GMOs, after a study done by Yale University in the year 2019, found out that these GMOs that you talk about so greatly being nutritional have artificial nutrition. So I might not have food, but I really don't want artificial food in my body. So first and foremost, is GMO really the problem? Take a good look in Africa. 
political instability. This is a problem that we have been facing ever since. After a study done by the University of Ibadan in the year 2020, 2020 March 23rd, they found out that most African countries are going through political instability. Example, Sudan, Congo, and even Somalia. A good example is Congo. It might have good geographical positioning, it might have good climatic factors and good water sources, but it's still going through uh, food insecurity. If they choose to take these GMOs, is accepting it going to be the going to be the hope for them when they're facing political instability? They won't be having money to buy these GMOs. Another thing is that you stated about another reason is corruption. After a study done by the Transparent Agency in the year 2019, found that, that African countries have a lot a large rate of corruption, even in the world in the world ranking of corrupt countries, countries like Nigeria, Congo, and even so South Africa come up top in the list due to their rate of corruption. So even if these countries were to adopt these GMOs, is GMOs going to help them when they do not have enough money to buy those seeds, to buy those lands that are going to plant these GMOs in? Well, I don't think that GMOs is going to be a solution when there is no money to buy these seeds. Another factor is that we have, how many of us have grown up in families where no child grows up wanting to be agriculturist or kids who want to, farm, to grow up and be farmers? This is because we have grown up with a mindset that farming is not a good career. And due to this negative attitude that people have towards agriculture, whether GMOs or non-GMOs, no one is going to plant foods and no one is going to get these crops done, so there will be food insecurity in Africa. And I think that, <clears throat> We should face these factors, factors that are more major than these GMOs. Another thing you've stated is about non-resistant to pests and diseases, these seeds that we're using that are non-GMOs. <clears throat> so, if, uh, for example, if Congo was to take this, they were to change the seeds from being pest resistant, will this reason change? Well, I disagree strongly from saying that GMOs is not a major factor to, to be thinking of because we have other factors like poor farming methods that whether GMO or non-GMO, these factors will not help the country, will not help Africa as a whole to factor out these problems. Africa is known for its fertile land and good climate conditions why, and good conditions that make us wonder why Africa doesn't have good yields. This country, this continent needs good reasoning. Africa is, I am an African, and Africa is my problem. I do not deserve to go for a foreign invention when we have Africans who have good minds to think of innovative ways. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will be taking closing remarks. Team Proposition, you have one minute to give your closing remark. Two kilos of unga is retailing at 250 Kenyan shillings today. And if that is not the cause of alarm, I don't know what is. This is because African countries have refused to embrace to new technologies of seed development. Um, instead of planting and running to churches to pray for rain, we could adopt this technology and avoid non-GMOs because we are not assured of them. Albert Einstein says insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Let's stop this insanity. Let's be sane. Thank you. Thank you very much. Team Opposition, you have one minute to give your closing remark. Do you really think that adopting foreign systems in the name of curbing the problem of food, food insecurity is really the answer? Do you really think that this adopting of uh, foreign technology is what will put our feet at a safe ground? Well, let me tell you this. Uh, better the devil you know than the angel you do not know. We know our foods. We know what they contain. We know what we grow. We do not know what are in the GMOs. We do not know what they 
they manufacture them with. We are talking of genetic mutations. We are talking about changes in human DNA. For example, in China, in 2010, July 21st, a ban was put on the use of GMOs. And China is one of the major leading uh, producers of these genetically modified foods. And yet, it is not used in their own country. Why do you accept to be used as a lab rat? Why do you accept for these foods to be tested on you? So at St. Therese Mboni girls, we stand that the uh, genetically, uh, not adopting genetically modified foods is not the main hindrance to curbing food insecurity here in Africa. Thank you. Another motion where justice has been duly served. Teams coming out strongly and furiously to defend their stands. Africa's over-dependence on ungenetically modified food crops is the main hindrance to achieving food security. Bony girls, what stood out for me, especially Annette, the third speaker, is you bringing out the other main hindrances, the mention of corruption, poor farming methods, political instability, and giving examples, that was a take home. That was a take home. Uh, Vanessa, the second speaker, Bonnie Girls, you had a good start. Uh, you did some good rebuttals, especially on the impact of GMOs. And then you also went ahead to give uh, alternatives, like uh, we have natural calamities. You went to the US and then you came to DRC. I was actually waiting to see whether you're going to bring that point home, because the global examples are good, and then they need to be related to regional or local examples. Uh, that, that is one of the ingredients of uh, a good debater. And then you also brought out uh, invasion of locusts. However, I don't know whether this is really on a large scale. So you need to like come out, we come up with points which are universally capturing uh, countries in Africa. But of course, your examples were relevant, so to speak. And then you're a very passionate debater with very good use of uh, rhetorical questions. Anna. Mudoki, I hope I got your name right. You had a good start, clear definition of terms. You gave some statistics. I wish you could have gone ahead and given the sources of those statistics. And then, of course, as a first speaker, I wish you could have brought out uh, these other main hindrances. But as I said, uh, this was brought out by your subsequent speakers. Otherwise, uh, you're a very passionate de debater. Uh, there was some kind of a uh, good organization in your team. Kathiani Girls, trust Oprah Winfrey not to disappoint, just like her name. A catchy, relevant start excellent definition of terms. There is something unique about your style and presentation. There is something unique about it, which is one of the ingredients of a good debater. And then you brought a contrast between uh, the GMOs and uh, the Kienyeji. Uh, that was a good uh, a way, that was a good way. However, from the judge's desk, we felt that uh, you could have given us more examples, more case studies on uh, how effective GMO has been and how effective it is going to be in solving this issue of uh, food insecurity. Uh, Masi Osando, you needed to rebuttal more clearly as the second speaker, and I was like, you're saying Africa's over-dependence on ungenetically modified food crops is the main hindrance. You brought out the issue of going the GMO way. Apart from the GMO way, is there any other way that we can break down this over-dependence? That is, you, you do not have to cage yourself to the kienyeji, kienyeji, you know, going a little broader in your thinking that, hey, we need to move away from over-depending on this and go to this, this, and that because this kienyeji one is not working. That kind of an argument could have given you more points and also made your argument stronger. But generally, you're a very passionate debater, which is uh, 
uh, one of the qualities of uh, a good debate. Sitati, you brought out some really strong conviction in what you are saying. Your passion could be felt. Uh, the statistics you gave, the 21% of the people falling hungry, world vision, I wish you could have gone ahead and also now bring out on how we can achieve food security. So there is that link, there is that link of this is the of a dependence, it is not working. What is it that we need to do in order to achieve this food security? That bit was not really coming out clearly. We felt that you tied yourself to defending, you know, these non genetically modified and GMOs, whereas there were other raft of measures that you could have brought out because you could have twisted the motion that we are over depending on genetically modified food crops. It's time the African government thought this other way so that we achieve food uh, security. But uh, generally you raised very passionate and uh, strong arguments to support your teams. There is a lot of potential in the two of you, in the two teams of course, and uh, even if one of the teams might not proceed to the next level, we are really proud of your submissions. All the best. Um, Jojomo has captured my thoughts clearly. Um, what stood out for me was opera and Annette. Very convincing style of presentation, mastery of topic, amazing. And may the best team win. A round of applause, please, for both teams on stage. A better round of applause. The judges have awarded Kathiani Girls with 67.5%. A round of applause, please, for Kathiani Girls. And the judges have awarded St. Teresa Mboni Girls with 68.5%. A round of applause, please, for St. Teresa Mboni Girls. And the winners of this debate are St. Teresa Mboni Girls. And we have come to the end of yet another debate here. And all the best to the teams that will be proceeding to the finals. Make sure to check our social media handle for more of this type of content that is on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter, on TikTok, and as well as on LinkedIn at the Debate Circle. And until next time, it is goodbye from us. <laughs>